Namaste. So we're continuing with Vichara Sangraham, the first sutra. Now, if you recall, the last episode was the invocation where Ramana says, the best way to honor, or worship, or adore the Supreme is to live as that, huh? to be the Supreme, to be Brahman, the Self. So, of course, the natural question is going to be, how? How do I do that? If I think I'm not the Self now, how do I become like that? How do I become enlightened? So let's look into it. Disciple. Master, what is the means to gain the state of eternal bliss, ever devoid of misery? Master, apart from the statement in the Veda that wherever there is body, there is misery, this is also the direct experience of all people. Therefore, one should inquire into one's true nature, which is ever bodiless, and one should remain as such. This is the means to gaining that state. So the state of enlightenment is the state where one is not identified with a body, where one does not think, I have a body, I am a body, this body is myself, or this is my being as a body. In fact, one often has no awareness of the body, any body <laughs> at all. This is enlightenment. This is bliss. This is freedom from suffering. And it doesn't matter how many times you hear these teachings in many different forms and styles, from the teaching of the Buddha, to the teaching of the Vedas, to the Upanishads, the Puranas, Bhagavad Gita, or whatever. They all agree on one thing. You are not the body. You are something beyond the body. Now, they may disagree on the details, but all teachings in all religions everywhere hold this truth. So let's look into it. Wherever there is a body, there is suffering. Why is that? Birth and death. That which is not maya has to come into existence at a certain point in time. Then it remains for another interval of time. And then at a final time, it disappears. So these are all causes of misery. Birth is painful. Existence is painful. And death is painful. Now, I'm not going to say that there's no pleasure in it, because obviously there is sufficient pleasure to keep us engaged in this business of life and death. But ultimately, from the absolute viewpoint, it's all suffering. The Buddha, for example, he said, any body or any experience is simply a mass of suffering. All sensation, all perception, all cognition is simply suffering. Because no matter how much you enjoy, there's an end to that enjoyment. And also, that enjoyment will not be perfect. There will be problems. There will be interruptions in your enjoyment. There will be sudden losses and reverses due to the influence of time. In other words, astrology. So, to exist, simply to be in a body, is so much work. You have to feed it, take it for walks. You know, it's like having a pet animal. You have to exercise it, give it medicine when it's sick, 
take care of it, give it enough sleep, enough water, enough food. It's a big endeavor. And that's suffering. Now, later on, Ramana is going to make a distinction between the different bodies. But even the subtle bodies still suffer from these same drawbacks and disadvantages. Even the most subtle body, the Vijnana Moikosha, still comes into existence at the beginning of the universe, exists for the duration of the universe, and when the universe is finished at the end in the Mahapralaya, it is destroyed. Only the Ananda Moikosha, the consciousness itself, is exempt from destruction. So if you're going to let go of all these other bodies, <laughs> it's the same thing as being without a body, being without form, being without a name or a designation, being without a concept of identity, being without activity, being without karma. These are all different terms for the same thing that we call enlightenment or self-realization. Self with a capital S because to realize that one is the self is to be free from birth and death, to be free from existence and work, to be free from ignorance and all cares and worries. Because the ultimate fear that drives everyone is the fear of death, isn't it? At the base of all of our fears and anxieties is the fear that we will not continue to exist. And although that is certainly true of this bodily form or even of the mental bodies, it is not true of the self. The self is always existent. Never was there a time when it came into being, nor will there come a time in the future when it ceases to be. That is the self. That is the real I. As Ramana calls it, I, I. The I that is only aware of itself. Now, the temporary being, the false identity, the self with a small s, a lowercase s, is always changing. It's always coming into being, going out of being, becoming something else. It's always going somewhere, doing something, thinking about something, having a perception, having an experience, desiring, being frustrated, <laughs> getting angry, wanting to know more and more. See, these are all the frustrations of having a body, whether it's a gross body or a subtle body. I mean, yes, the subtle body is more capable than the gross body. It exists for a longer time. It's less subject to the problems of life. But still, in the end, it has to disappear. So why would we want to invest our time and energy, our care, and so on, our identity, in a body that's going to disappear. I like this analogy of an investment plan. We have this great investment plan for your retirement. You pay money into it every chance you get, but at any point in time, the whole thing can disappear and go to zero. Isn't that a great investment plan? <laughs> no, it's not. You want your time, your effort, your money, and your care, and so on, to accrue, to grow, to bear interest and annuities. Huh? You don't want to have it disappear. You don't want to take that risk. 
then why should you take the risk of investing time and effort and so on into this material body or even the subtle body when they are bound to disappear in time? It simply doesn't make any sense. It's a waste of time and effort. Better we invest our time and effort in that which never disappears. Like Jesus says in the Bible, keep your fortune where moth and rust doth not corrupt. Because everything in the material world corrupts. It all rots away. It all rusts. It all tarnishes. Huh? With time. Time is the great master of all. And you cannot beat time. Time is what drives everything. So, with that in mind, what we should do with our time and energy and effort and care is invest in vichara, atma vichara, investigation of the self, looking into who am I? What am I? Why am I here? And how do I get liberation? How do I attain this state without any miseries, without any suffering? How do I get beyond the conditional existence of the material world, birth and death? How do I experience immortality? and freedom? And the answer to all those questions is the same. Self-realization. And how is that attained? By Atma Vichara. That's the subject of this book. Vichara Sangraham. A collection of texts or aphorisms or sutras about Atma Vichara. The word Atma is simply assumed because that is the message, that is the topic, that is the aim of all scriptures, not only the Vedic, but also the Buddhist and every other kind of scriptures. They may, some go, may go farther into it than others. Some may have more detail or more depth, but the ultimate aim is the same. We want immortality, we want freedom from suffering, we want bliss, huh? more than just these negative things. We want something positive, happiness, bliss. So how do we get these things? By looking into the self with a capital S. Now he says that one's real nature is ever bodiless. That refers to the gross body and also the subtle body. So there are many yogic and tantric literatures that discuss uh, dropping the gross body or disidentification with the gross body, but then they talk about the subtle body as being the real body, the real self. But the subtle body, although it may be residing in the pure creation, uh, in one of the Vaikuntas, the worlds of Vishnu or Lakshmi or Shakti or Shiva uh, or one of these incorruptible worlds. But even those worlds are finished at the time of universal dissolution, at the end of the Mahakalpa. So really, the only salvation is in the self. And that is the perfection of enlightenment. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.